page seven, install the gantry profile display kit. And in this next section, we're also going to include page eight, which is install the spool holder and gantry cover. While we're into installing the top profile, it's so easy to just go ahead and install that top spool cover. So here we go. This is the top, uh, top down view of the printer. We're going to install that top profile. There's the top Z axis profile right here with the four recessed screw holes. They are going to point upwards. And then we're going to use four M5 by 25 screws and attach the top here to the Z axis profile. Now, none of these four screws should really fight you going in. If one of them does give you a hard time, it's possible your Z axis is slightly out of pitch. So that will be something to look into now. After that top profile is secured, we go ahead and start creating and mounting this spool holder. Now they use T-type screws, which can definitely be a headache. The best way I found to use them, and it really is kind of a breeze now, is when you thread that nut, that T-type nut onto the screw, you just barely thread it on there. You want to give this T-type screw a lot of chance to catch that aluminum extrusion. So as you saw, one thread on there, that was it. Do the same thing with the next one, and then when you lay that T-type screw into the channel, as you start tightening it, it has a, many rotations to catch the aluminum extrusion. And then once it does, it tightens itself down. If you screw that screw on too far, when you try to tighten it, it won't give itself a chance to bind itself around the aluminum extrusion. And you're just going to keep doing it over and over again. So barely thread that nut on there and you'll have much more success. And now finally, we're going to install the LCD screen. I've already loosened up the T-nuts all the way to the end. I'm going to slide them into the aluminum extrusion, just like I talked about before, and tighten them up. Pretty simple, really. After that, we're going to connect the back of the LCD screen and then snap it into place. Here we have the cable that goes to the LCD screen. It snaps in pretty nicely. Well, maybe not for me, <laughs> but once you get it in there, you can slide it into place and your printer is ready to go. Page nine, wire connection. Now that we fully built our printer, it's time to wire all the motors and end stops up and get the first auto home and the first print. So. This is our assembled printer. We're looking at it from the Z motor side. So if you were looking at the printer straight on, it would be to the left of that. And the first thing we're gonna mount up here is the Z end stop switch. And all these connectors just push right in. And the easy thing about all these connectors is there's a small yellow plastic ring around each wire right there and it denotes which wire goes where. So it's very, very simple. The motors and the end stop switches have different connectors so you can't mess them up. Next, right here, I'm doing the Z motor, clipping that in. Then we're going to head up to the X axis end stop switch. Make sure that these wires are going around your lead screw in the back and not between the lead screw and the axes. Now, the cool thing, again, about the design of the Voxel Lab IKEA is that the X profile cover right there doesn't hide the access to the end stop switch. Normally you'd have to get pliers to get in there, but as you can tell, I just snapped it right in with my hands. Another headache averted. After that, we're going to do the X axis motor. And then we, after we do the X axis motor, we're going to go and hook up the extruder motor. Right now, I'm going to put in that pneumatic coupler that I didn't do a few pages ago. There was no need to do it now, so do it then. So now I'll do it now. 
Also a really good note, the coupler that comes with the printer is not the best quality. If you can get an aftermarket one, I would highly recommend it. As far as the other upgrades I did, this would be a big one. It tends to not grab onto the Bowden tube and you can get a little bit of stringing. You won't know where it's from and it's from that coupler failing. So after I installed the coupler, I tighten it up with the wrench and then I run the Bowden tube along the electrical wires just to get a feel for exactly how it's gonna go and push it in, make sure it bottoms out. And then I take the blue clasp that came with the printer and I push it between the metal part of the coupler and the plastic nut there. So to make sure that the teeth are grabbing my PTFE tubing, everything's moving nice and smooth. Finally, what I'll do after this is put a few cable ties in just to make sure that the wires are up and out of the way. So the final step we're going to take before we turn on this printer and auto home it for the first time is to adjust that Z end stop height. Now the Z end stop is the stop that was on the Z access profile that we saw in the beginning, beginning of this video. And that's where the X carriage clicks and, and activates in order to tell this printer that it needs to lower no further. So this basically determines the bottom of your nozzle. So what we, what we want to do is we want to adjust this Z end site and the Z end stop height so much that it's not so far down where when it gets activated, it's crashing to your bed and scratching your glass bed. And we want to make sure that it's not so far up that the gap between the nozzle and the glass bed needs a significant adjustment of your bed springs. So if you watched the previous portion of the video where I changed or upgraded my bed springs, I recommended before turning your printer on to adjust each bed spring to about 75% strength. And what I mean by that is we want there to be a, a decent amount of tension on these springs, not so much that you can't uh, tension them any further and not so much that they're, they're so loose that you, a single adjustment will make them untensionable completely. We want there to be a decent amount of tension, but we can also screw them down if we need to, and we can also loosen them if we need to, and there's still tension on it if we loosen it. But what we're seeing there was the, the height of my end stop, and you could tell with the post-it note, it was way, way too high. It's a very significant gap. If I was to level my bed with that gap, I would be doing a bunch of adjusting, adjustment on those knobs. And by the time I got it close to the nozzle, it's very possible I would have little to no tension on the springs of my bed, which is really not ideal. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the side of our printer. We're going to loosen the two screws that hold in, hold in the Z end stop, and we're going to adjust it. It's very simple, uh, but it is a very important step like most of them that we've taken so far. Now, the way this Z end stop is held in is with those T nut screws. So you don't want to, when you loosen these screws, uh, you don't want to loosen them too much, just a little bit, just so much that you can move it up and down. If you loosen it too much, it's possible that that head will fall off. You, then you got to take the whole thing off, find it within the channel. It's, it can be a bit of a headache. So just loosen a little bit, adjust it accordingly, and then tighten them back up. And another key step when you tighten them back up for each adjustment, you want to tighten them up fully. If you only tighten them a little bit and then you think, all right, I'll tighten them when I'm, when I'm actually done, if I like the height. The problem with that is when you go to adjust the height, it can click the Z end stop, push it down a little further. And then you think, all right, this is a great height. You tighten it up. You didn't even realize that the Z end stop got pushed down further. And then when it actually goes to auto home, your Z end stops two or three millimeters lower than you thought and it crashes into your bed. So uh, loosen it, adjust it, tighten it up all the way and see if you like that. If you do, that's perfect and you can keep moving on. If you don't, loosen it again, adjust it again tighten it again, and the process continues. Now, what I like to do is I like to bring my nozzle just above my bed, and then I like to loosen the Z end stop switch, and then I bring the switch up to the XE access plate. That's what activates it until I hear the click. The click, it means that the Z end stop is being activated. So I loosen it. I, I bring my nozzle using the coupler of the lead screw. That's what I use to adjust the height. So I use the coupler of the lead screw. I bring my nozzle slowly down to the bed. I get it to a height that I like. I would say almost the height of a post-it note gap between the nozzle and the glass bed. Then I loosen my ZN stop. I bring it all the way to the bottom so it's unactivated. And then I slowly raise it up until I hear that click. That means that's where the bed would be registering the ZN stop. At that point, I tighten it up right there. One thing to note, if you tighten it up in a in a awkward fashion, the ZN stop switch could uh, pitch forward or backwards. You want to make sure it's perpendicular. So as you're tightening, just keep an eye on it. Make sure it doesn't pull one way or the other. Tighten it up fully, like I said. Then using the coupler, you're going to bring your the height of your nozzle up again, and then you're going to bring it back down until you hear the click. And you're going to keep doing that until you see that the nozzle is a good distance away from the bed. 
So I've adjusted mine, and now you're going to see the distance. The first time, there was a fair amount of gap between the nozzle and the glass bed. And now, look at that. I can slide a post it note under it. You can... There is definitely some clearance between the post and note, but it's significantly reduced. So when it's time to adjust this bed, which we'll do very shortly, the amount of rotation on those bed level knobs is going to be significantly less. So I'll still keep tension on the screws uh, on the bed levels, which is what we wanted. And now for the most satisfying portion of our build, the removal of the plastic wrap on the glass build plate. Okay, get that glass build plate back on the heated bed. Use both clips that came with the printer to snug it on there. I had to actually add two mini binder clips because my glass bed wasn't fully pressed down to the heated bed. And I noticed during leveling, I couldn't get a proper level because both corners were actually tipped up in the air. So I used two extra binder clips. So just keep an eye while you're leveling. We make sure the voltage is correct on the back of my machine. I'm in America, so I select 115. Turn it on. Find the control portion of the menu. Click onto that. After that, find the auto home portion. Click auto home. We make sure all the axes are homing properly. After that, we're going to do a quick bed level. Load our filament. Make sure that you start the nozzle at the appropriate temperature. For me, it's 205. You go into settings, temperature, nozzle temperature. Bring it to the appropriate nozzle temperature. Then you're going to load your filament. And then we're going to get our first print. Okay guys, so there you have it. We unboxed it, we assembled it, we did our first print. Well, we actually did two prints because the first time I printed, the camera wasn't on. Um, this machine went together pretty easily. It printed out very easily. Uh, I'm happy so far. I'm gonna be printing around the clock with this thing, so hopefully I'll, I'll review somewhere down the road. Um, I'm definitely going to have a uh, E-Steps or Extrusion Steps video coming up soon, because I'm gonna calibrate that shortly, probably after I'm done with this video. And then I'm going to have uh, a video of people want because I'm not sure if everyone knows how to set up a new Cura pro profile for this specific machine. Uh, the SD card that comes with the machine does have a profile on there, but there are a few extra settings you kind of want to change in order to get um, the purge strip right here, as well as a few things to push the bed out and stuff like that. So I appreciate you staying till the end. And one last thing before I forget, because it was on the back of mine, the two belt tensioners here that I haven't talked about yet, awesome addition. Same thing on the V2, that's why it's obviously here. Uh, tighten and loose them. You don't want your belts super tight. You don't want them sagging and super loose. You want a nice little happy medium. By just touching the belt, you can kind of feel the tension. You should know where you're at. And then during the printing, you can check. You can see what kind of ghosting you might have. Uh, questions like that, leave them in the comments. I'll make another video like that. Uh, I really appreciate you sticking around and uh, spending some time with me. Till next time.